what, what the brand really is about rather than uh, what the brand saying that they're about. Uh, so Chris's uh, presentation is going to um, take you under, I suppose, the, the skin of uh, communicating uh, sustainability. Okay. First question I ask, how many people here are clients on the client side? Okay, how many people on the supplier side? How many on, how many just on agency? Okay, how many people are consumers? Oh, that's good. There's a few people who haven't got their hands up, so I guess the other half does the shopping then. Um, I want to talk to you briefly, this is just a small section of a talk I do generally about green and ethics. Firstly for me, it's about ethics and green is part of ethics. And this is all part of ethics. And ethics is a very big area, often overlooked by a lot of brands. And I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about the consumer and I'll talk about sort of some of the profiling of a consumer we did for one particular product. Um, I don't so much want to deal in rules. I don't believe in writing rules. I think it's a big mistake making marketing think there are rules, there aren't. I deal in observations, and I can give you observations and instincts, and in a way it's up to you to make your own conclusions, and I think that's the most important thing to do, is don't make any assumptions. There's an enormous number of assumptions. I came back from Paris a couple of weeks ago where I was with a very big cosmetic brand, and I think there are more assumptions around that table than I've ever seen. Massive assumptions with no substantiation, no facts behind them, just assumptions, and it was quite frightening to see how people were just making assumptions all the time. So assume nothing. As the right brother said when they learned to fly, assume nothing, you know, start from scratch and make your own observations. Uh as you probably said in the CV, I have to plug this because my publisher says so. Uh, you'll find a lot of this stuff in this book with lots and lots of other insights and approaches to ethical marketing and the broader game of ethical marketing, not just green, as in case studies, and lots of interesting facts. It's very useful tools as well, especially the ethical sphere, which helps you as a brand identify which is the best ethical route to go down. It's often not the one you think, I can tell you. Um, so let's talk about in the mind of the consumer. Um, we've done two years running now, I think, of the Ethical Price Index. We go out, we interview 1,200 people, which is, I think, a fairly minimal number for a survey. And we ask questions. One thing we realise, when you ask people, are you green, are you caring, are you ethical, everyone goes, of course I am. And then you watch how they buy things, and it's a different habit. If you actually ask people how much they'll pay for things, you get a much more interesting dynamic, because when you put a price on it, you realise people's true values. And part of the survey, what we did was actually to put a price on it. Now, a couple of years ago, I raised a debate when we were at a launch of a magazine saying, you know, it's about people versus planet, right? And what it is is there, there are people issues and there's planet issues. You want to simplify ethics, it falls into two. And we did a survey into actually seeing which way people fell. And we've done about three different surveys involving that one question. And it's quite interesting to what people think it falls and what it really does fall. Now, I'm going to show you some initially some results. As I say, these are observations, okay? So they're what a group of people have said to us in response to questions that have been very rigorous tried and tested um, to see if they actually give a fairly genuine answer. Um, but it can be quite surprising. The first question we ask is, you know, if you offer two identical products, one that helped people and one helped planet, which would you go for? 69% voted for people. They cared more about people, they cared about the planet. And I'll explain why in a minute. It's quite interesting that this Christian Aid ad that was run about be a love and switch your computer off at the end of the day. In research, what turned out is that when people said, oh my God, I didn't realise that actually, by being a sort of mean consumer, I'm actually you know, being nasty to people in the third world. As soon as there was a people connection in there, people actually made more of a connection and said, oh, okay, so maybe I will turn down the heating, I'll turn the lights off, I'll turn the computer off. So there's this human connection which is really big. It's, I was talking earlier on in, about so-called, you know, the might call the white van driver. We've got quite a lot of in that area and we spoke to some of them. They aren't that bothered about green, but as soon as you talk about community, boom, they're interested. People really scores highly. It's interesting in the TNS world fashion, panel fashion, you know, when people ask what makes ethical fashion, what is interesting, people actually don't start talking about green environmental, it's about no sweatshops used, people, child labour, not used, decent wage. People care about people first. The no environmental damage actually came from a question about we don't want to put chemicals in the, in the actual rivers because it's going to kill all the, the fish and the, and the plants and things. So they're very human orientated. But what is interesting is Primark, despite the dubious nature of what, how they make things, still seems to be massively growing. So we have this sort of conflict where you have people saying, yes, I care, but you know what? For two pounds, I'll go and buy the t-shirt. They'll trade off their ethics. And a good example of that is when I was talking to this cosmetic company, is saying they were talking about, you know, promoting some of their green values and ethic values. And the guy said very cynically, and I'm not supposed to repeat this, but you know, when it comes to looking younger, a 40-year-old is going to trade the planet first. You know, <laughs> sorry, but... 
you know, we're driven by strong emotions. We're driven by things, you know, it's very hard to get that kind of balance, get people care enough. Do you trust green ethical claims in ads? Well, no surprise, not many people do. But actually, not many people actually believe ads at all. Ads have a very, very low believability. And in one survey, it turned out that as soon as you actually made green claims, the ads were even less believable. So you might want to be, if you're a brand, you probably want to not bother making green claims. Okay. Uh, this is one where in the US survey in Burst Media, only 70% trusted ads, only 14% trusted green ads. So that's 3% less. So it's an interesting dynamic. And that's probably because in America they've had a lot worse greenwash, you know, and you've got big companies like Chevron and, and people, you know, lying through their teeth about how green they are. Do you trust that a green ethical claims on packaging? Interestingly enough, it's almost the flip side of the advertising. And the reason for this, by the way, is that actually people believe that packaging is legislated, it's legal, they have to make it legally correct, which isn't true. Um, except in a few cases. But most of the time you can rely on a packaging, but people believe the packaging first. So when they get to point of sale, if it says it's all wonderful and wonderful, then it's more believable. However, and I'll point out later, there is a point where that is not believable. Interesting enough, we found that consumers really didn't understand half the logos. There are so many. Grocer did a very interesting research into logos, and it's just frightening how many logos there are and how few recognize. The one that came out top in the Grocer's survey was Fair Trade. It's one we We've found that people really understand that they're really understanding this one now as well because it's getting so much advertising support. Yeah, it's a lot of confusion about actually what these logos mean, and often these logos are misused anyway. So, in fact, they don't have their original meaning the same way. Yeah. Is it recycled? Is it for recycling? Is it made from recycled material? I think it's this one here, which is the one where you pay a bit of money and you can stick it on your packaging, and it just means you've contributed a bit to some recycling scheme, but it doesn't make your packaging. It's a lot of deceptive packaging. An interesting story I heard was actually that when I think it was MS, put aeroplanes on their salads to show that their, their salads have been flown in. Their sales went up. Why? Because consumers said it must be fresher. Yeah, that's a good example. You've got values. The reason I say there are no rules is because literally every little item has a different set of dynamics playing for it. So you have to be really quite detailed. Um, will consumers pay more for ethical products? Very interesting. Well, up to now, we pretty much have. I mean, if you look at things like organic, heavily overpriced. In fact, stupidly overpriced. Uh, it's particularly because you go and buy a cucumber for 60p and an organic one costs twice as much. Yeah, and the amazing thing is now, I think, is they brought organic things that really hadn't got any chemicals in them in the first place weren't used, you know, you have to start questioning. I think there's a big issue over the, as we all know, from the whole image of organics at the moment. But we found out that actually people will. 65% would pay 20% or more, they say. 29% would happily pay up to 30% more. 11% will pay 40% more, and 9% will pay 50%. I don't believe that 99%, to be honest. But we do know people pay more because they have been buying organics, and up to now they've also been buying fair trade, which is now, in the case of tea and coffee, much closer to normal pricing, if not actually somewhat cheaper cheaper sometimes. So what we found is when we asked people about it, we did a very complicated into if we badge certain products up. We took a particular product in the supermarket and said, found out what supermarket people bought from, say Tesco. Said, so, okay, if this product was actually sold, this is your Tesco's own brand. Now, if they gave it to you with this labeling, this labeling, this labeling, this labeling, how much more would you pay for it? And that way we were able to test to see actually how much they would consider paying for. So we could almost get a price measure on almost every ethical claim. So it could be made locally, it could be organic, it could be you know, um, re made from recycled materials, it could be fair trade. The one that came out best was fair trade. Okay? And that was without doubt, if you want to badge anything in the supermarket to sell it more, fair trade does it. Second, actually, was donate to charitable causes. That was really interesting because people actually, they care. And it depends on what the cause is, but generally if it's people or animals, it's amazing, animals especially. And that's something we often forget in ethics because we've kind of, that's almost history now. We don't talk so much about animals. But in fact, when it comes to ethics, we found that the consumers are just as concerned about animals as they are about people and more so than planet. You know, there has been, if you look at the one about chickens and about, you know, the whole issue, one of the first big ethical badging came in was called free range. You know, we forget now, we take it for granted that free range is there. But, you know, there was a big issue about this at one point, about the way, you know, chickens were abused, you know, and there's still a lot of concern over things like Kentucky Fried Chicken and stuff like that. So animals were featured very heavily, especially in the Brits. Um, environmental issues were not the highest. You know, they were, they were down there. They weren't ignored by any means. But we found some very interesting issues as well, the fact that people did not believe some of the claims. Now, one person drew our attention to, I think it was Sainsbury's, whose toilet paper is suddenly now saving the planet, but it was the same toilet paper that wasn't last year. So how's that? What were they just done then? You know, and there was this cynicism from the consumer.